First of all, let's go over the anatomy of a C++ program. Now, I actually haven't actually looked through over this book at all, but I believe that we could definitely learn C++ in seven days. All you have to do is believe in yourself, and then you can become a good C++ coder. So let's start with this, the introduction. Who should read this book? This book starts you from the beginning and teaches you the languages and the concepts involved with C++ programming. You'll find the numerous examples of syntax and detailed analysis of code in this guide, as well as you will begin your journey into this rewarding environment. These boxes are used for conventions to help your C++ become more efficient and effective. These are the tips. Notes, this book uses various typefaces to help you distinguish C++ code from regular English. Actual C++ code is type space. Let's just get into the meat bones. All right, the C++ has gone over a huge history. Uh, assemblers were once invented to map machine instructions to human readable and management mnemonics, such as ADD and MOVE. Then higher level languages evolved, such as BASIC and COBOL. These languages let people work with something approximating words and sentences, such as code, let I equals 100. These, these were then translated by interpreters and compilers from machine language. And then the, as interpreters translates and executes these programs, they turn these programs and instructions into source code directly into actions. A compiler translates so source code into an intermediate form. The step is compiling, and it produces an object file. The compiler invokes a linker, which combines the object file into an executable program. That's executable programs. That is very important, actually, because that's how every single program in your thing is is running an executable program in your OS. Procedural programming programming does line by line, and object oriented programming has like objects and classes that you could basically like classify these co a bunch of code into different types of structures and like objects so that you could run them. So like let's say you could have a class for like I don't know a car, then you could, might have like seats in a car. You might have stuff like that in order to help your code and it's good for it because it helps encapsulation it prevents other people from re recreating it it's something called data hiding it stops people from reading your code and also the good thing about encapsulation is that the people using your code they don't have to know the implementations of it and inherit it and reuse it that's a good thing about it and polymorphism so you could use your diff you could use the same code for different types of objects and it would understand and interpret it the right way and this is just c plus how it evolved um let's see uh, your development environment. So what I did was I actually downloaded uh, Visual S Studio 2017 because uh, Visual Studio 2017 is probably the easiest to download. Like I, like you could download Eclipse and then extra extract it, but Visual Studio 2017 is pretty easy to download. And I'm all running on Windows 7, so uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty easy to download, okay? If, if I'm working at Windows 7 and it works on my computer, you should definitely be able to do it for Windows 10, for Mac, for anything. Development cycle. So... If every program worked the first time you tried, this would be complete development cycle. But that doesn't work like it. Okay, so you basically you have to write the program, compile it, link it, and run it. But unfortunately, there are definitely source code errors. There's bugs, and there's a lot of other problems. There's probably syntax errors if you type something wrong. So that's why this is a development cycle. You start it, you edit the code, then you compile it. If there's compile errors, you go back to edit code. Link it if, if linking works. Then if there's linking errors, you go back, you edit the code again, you run the program, and then there's runtime errors, that means the code crashes when you run it. Then you go back and you go edit the code and then you do the whole thing again. Hello.cpp. All right, let's start with hello world. So I'm gonna open up Visual Studio. Hopefully this doesn't lag. Why don't we just easily create a simple project? So file new project, and then we're gonna, we could just create an empty project. Let's just call this, uh, click on empty, Visual C++ empty project. And do hello uh, underscore world. This is basically the code for hello world. You got to pay attention to the punctuation. If you don't follow it, then you might get compile errors, and if you you might not be able to do it. So I'll, I'll explain this the whole the whole code immediately. Boo yeah okay. So let's go to source files. Add a we're gonna add a new item. C plus plus file. What did I call it? I just called it source. Oh that's stupid. All right whatever. Pound include hashtag uh, uh, lesson sign IO stream. That's basically the preprocessor directive. Basically, this is telling the preprocessor to saying, okay, include this amount of code. We're going to use the IO stream right now because that's how we get input and output from the console. In main, this is the main program. This is when the program starts. Okay. And this is main function is when the program starts, and this integer is a return type. This returns an integer. So we're going to actually just return zero yep. for now. All right. So now I'm going to save it. Control S. So if you saved it, the green line would appear. The green line. That's basically just telling you that, oh, it's saved already. Okay. Um, STD is your standard uh, uh, namespace, right? And we're going to get the code called Cout. Cout is what helps you print out onto the console. 
to the screen. Then we're going to include the, in C it's bitwise operators, but it's not really a bit shifting. It's just redirecting input, I guess. I don't know what to call it. But then we're going to do hello, and, th and then we're going to print out hello world. So that's what we're going to do. Hello world. And then we do the same thing, but then we're, we're also going to create end L. This is a new line. This tells you that you have a new line and let's see, end L, end L is not identified. Oh, okay. That's because we need to include STD in end L also. I think that's, yeah, okay. Now you save it. Now we'll, we'll get into STD later, what it is, why we do it. STD is basically like a namespace where you also inherit the code. IO stream, we have to tell the, tell the, Tell the program that we we want inherit the code. We use this code from this library, and that's why we you have to include IO stream because that's input output. Okay, I already saved it. Basically, just run the logger. Boom! Hello world, and it quickly closes. There's a way to stop that. I know. Always use always use Stack Overflow. System pause. That's all you have to do. All right, this this stops it from closing immediately. So we're just gonna go here and then do a system pause. This tells a just code it's a method invocation telling it's a system command telling the the program that boom we're gonna pause everything all right let's run it again click the run button hello world boom now it says press any key key to continue congratulations guys you just written your first hello world program look, look at the process menu wow and now we're gonna press any key to continue let me just review it again I include hashtag include IO stream says, okay, we're going to include code from the IO stream library so that the preprocessor can include the code. And then they would be like, okay, now you could use this code. Otherwise it's like, we don't know where you're getting your code from. The reason why we include this so that we could use C out and the C out is there used to use for, because we need to see out. We need, this is just to print out code to the console. We need the code to print out hello world to the console, right? And the L is the code for a new line. I mean, we could easily get rid of this and do a slash N for the string, right? But it's easier to learn something new. System pause tells the program to pause everything because it would just automatically close, shut down if you do that. System pause tells the program, okay, we're gonna wait until the until a the user types in a keyboard. So we're just gonna keep waiting until the user enters a key into the keyboard and then they'll be like, oh, okay. And then we close the program. Look at the following program and try to guess what it does without running it. Hashtag include IO stream in main. Okay. So let's just do that. Do slash star basically comments the whole thing out. So I'm going to put that slash star basically tells, tell the, the code saying that, Oh, you're not going to run these lines of code. But if I do want to use this, if I do want to run it again, like I could just uncomment it out like that. So it's basically like saving your code so that you don't have to like delete it. Once you could also do slash slash. Now I'm going to pause this video. And you guys should try to figure out what this exercise does. So look, look, look what it does. Int main includes IO stream int main. It creates an integer X, makes it five, creates an integer Y, makes it seven. And it prints, prints end L. Then it C outs X plus Y space, or just string space, X times Y, C out end. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to lead you guys to do that, to do this and just type it on your computer and see what happens. And then once you do that, just continue the video. Okay, guys. Now, assuming you already did that, we're going to quickly type this code out int X int Y equals to seven. What do you think this would occur? Well, it already gives me a compile error. So, cause it's just really smart. So yeah. Why do you think there's an error? Does it do what you guessed? Well, okay. I'm just going to explain why there's an error. Uh, Endel doesn't know what where it's coming from. Like you need the code to get Endel to create a new line. Another thing you do is a slash N in the string when you do hello world. But basically we need an STD that for Endel. We have to do STD for everything for now. Um, I don't think you could, I don't think there's an STD end. Yeah, there isn't. Just changes redirection. Um, yeah, it's just end L. So yeah, that's the reason why the code fails. But now, now that we fixed the compile errors, what do you think it does? Come on, guys. Oh, you probably won't answer me anyway. It should be print out five plus seven space five times seven. 
12, 35. Boom, guys. Basically, int x equals 5. It means creates an integer variable called x and sets the value to 5. Int y equals 7 creates an integer variable called y and sets it equal to 7. Now, when you, when you do std c out std and l, that prints out a new line. And then when you do S, std c out x plus y, that prints out 12. And then it prints out a space. Then it prints out 5 times 7. And that basically what it that's what it does. Basically, you're printing out x plus seven, uh, 5 plus 7. Then you're printing out a space, a string for a space. Then you're printing out 5 times 7, which is 35. And then you're printing out and l, which is a new line. And l means a new line. And then you're going to print out another new line. And then you're going to do system pause, wait until it hits a keyboard, until it reads in a value from a keyboard because Microsoft Visual Studio closes the program immediately. That's just how it works. Okay, yes, type in this or what error do you receive? Let's just try it. Type this program and compile it. What error do you see? We're gonna type this. Comment this out, comment this code out. Yeah, just keep keep the system pause. What is the error actually? Let's see. There's no problem. And we're done. This has been day one.